my hollyhocks. <laughs> They're uh, at the end of their season. So I figured what better time to come out and do a little how-to and do some take care of our hollyhocks. Um, my goal is that since they're already growing new sprouts at the bottom, if I cut back this old growth, then they will grow new flowers this year. First, they're seeding. Um, the hollyhock is a annual. It's actually called a biannual because it takes two years to grow, so it'll grow like a little bushy thing, and then the following year it'll grow bigger. In fact, the first when I first planted these hollyhocks, I actually bought them from the Walmart or whatever, and it said they were honeysuckles. So I planted honeysuckles two years ago thinking, oh, it'll be amazing. I'll have these honeysuckles. And they are not honeysuckles. And they didn't even grow last year. Um, I actually ended up planting lilies right here this for this year. Um, and then this hollyhock grew. I had to move the lilies because the hollyhock is taller than me. I mean, taller than my arms. My, I'm not, I can't, with my arm up high in the air, it's taller than me. So this is beautiful. It's great next to windows. Um, it, the moths and the bees and the butterflies all love it. It gets those really pretty flowers. Um, they call it a cottage garden flower. Um, hollyhocks are great for prosperity. They were used in the Victorian era and they were planted to bring good things to the house um, and to be prosperous. Um, they're a very fertile plant. So they have a ton of seed pods. Mom! Which we'll get to. I found! <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so I've got a little jar here. I am with some scissors because they do come off pretty easy. I just wanted to go faster than having to pick it, and I'm not gonna lie. So the hollyhocks seem to attract the earwigs, pinterbugs, um, and they also attract. Well, here's one right here, a weevil. Uh, weevils are really interesting bugs. They're pretty small, or I'd show it to you, but they have like it's like a they're little brown or gray black bugs. Um, they have a typical bug body, but then they have this long pointy nose thingy. Um, to keep them back, I just spray the hollyhocks with soapy water every once in a while, and it helps to get rid of the bugs. But I think the earwigs are eating the, the whatever they're called, weevils. Um, so the weevils live up on the flowers up here, like on the stock. Right now I see one. Is right here on this stock. Beetle. I don't know where he went. They're little. You can bear, I mean, when you get up and there's a lot of them, you can see them, but they have like this crazy nose thing going on. Um, they don't really, I mean, the damage that you see on my leaves right here is because I have a cricket infestation. A grasshopper, or crickets, grasshoppers. The grasshoppers are really bad this year. So they are just demolishing my garden everywhere. <laughs> But the weevils kind of live on the tops of the flowers. Look, here's a freaking grasshopper now. Oh. Uh, but down no little bait. I'm catching them and scaring them and touching all my plants every day to get rid of the stupid grasshoppers, but they're everywhere. Um, and it's just a prosperous year for them. Anyways, so I've got my jar. I'm collecting the seed pods. Um, I'm not gonna lie because there's so many earwigs. I'm scared to open the seed pods right now. I would rather like let them sit somewhere for. Oh, there's a weevil on this ear, on this one. Let's see if I can show you this one. Let's see. There he goes. Oh, there he is. Okay, so you see that little tiny bug on there? That's a weevil. You can't really see his long skinny nose because he's so little. And it's, it won't focus on him, but you see in there, there's a weevil. Uh, I don't think they bite people or anything. Like, he doesn't want me. He's crawling away from me for dear life. <sighs> My seeds. Ah! Anyways, so. Weevils are just a bug that really likes them. Um, the hollyhocks are native in Colorado, so they are hardy to up to zone three. Um, they will hard freeze. Um because they reseed themselves. So, um, like I said, I don't want to open that. So we'll do it. I'll be brave, okay? Let's <laughs> so, let's see, which one of these leaves is in the way? Oh, it's this one. Put that out of here. I'm going to cut these whole plants down. So, uh, as you can see right here, right? Let's see, right here. Oh, you can't see that one. You can see this, this one right here is a seed pod. 
um, when they are closed. It just looks like the bottom of where the flower died. At first I thought that these little round things were the seed pods. They're like little round balls. And in fact, I was collecting these out of my garden everywhere. I don't know what they are. It's like the fruit of this plant, I guess. Um, oh, I got this other interesting bug on here. I don't know what it is. I looked it up. Let's see. What is this? Yeah, it's like a fruit or something. Inside of it's got like a fleshy, polleny center. See? That's what's inside the little balls. So they're not like... Whatever, they're all over. they like little brown bombs all over my strawberry plants. Anyways, okay, so to collect your seed pods, you know that they're ready because they're dry. Because they're dry to the touch. Um, and they just kind of bend off. They're starting to open. So again, I'll show you the inside of this. So, as you can see, oh shoot, don't drop, well I guess it's okay if we drop this because I am replanting them right here. Okay, so as we open it, you can see that there are a plethora, okay, it's moving, I thought it was in your way. Okay, so see, there's a plethora of seeds, they're just falling out, and that's how you know they're ready. They're dry, they're just coming out on their own, um, and they're little flat seeds, they're pretty easy. Um, now clearly off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight major stalks. I have probably 50 of these little things. Um, so it definitely is a prolific seeder. That's where it gets that prosperous energy from. Um, and because of its height and the way that it kind of just grows around, it is that's where it comes with that protector. So it's a great protector of your home. It brings joyous, prosperous energy. It also encourages the pollinators. I found that the moths really, really liked it this year. Um, and of course like the bees and stuff uh, so but it's really easy to grow just be mindful that when you plant it it's not going to probably grow that first year unless you get one that's already a year old from like a nicer garden store um, and then then it might flower that first year but just keep in mind the first time that you plant them that it is a biannual so it'll take two years for it to, to, to whatever so my goal is on planting seeds this year it's still early enough in the summer hopefully they'll come up and they'll do that first half of their life before they flower. And then when they come up next year, they'll make flowers. Okay, so I had one more thing I want to show you. I'm going to have a camera. So we talk, I talk a lot about knowing where you get your seeds and your plants and how to take care, like, because it does make a big difference. And I'm going to show you a big example of why. I have a problem buying columbines. <laughs> so anytime I see them, especially on sale, if it's a whole plant, I will buy them. Uh... But it's not always the best thing. So they typically will flower pretty well for me the first time. But then it's what happens next that is the problem. So here are two columbine plants. There's actually four, but the two in the back are dying. So um, this one will probably sustain and come back next year as long as it retains a lot of this growth. I've been deadheading um, and just pulling the stem, hardy stems back. To encourage new root growth or to encourage new growth so it is getting some new growth here um, so these ones I bought at like the grocery store or the Walmart I mean both I, some of them I bought at Walmart and some of them I bought at the grocery store so these ones like I said aren't doing too bad if we look at these ones that I got at Walmart like I know I got this one at Walmart um, it's pretty much dead. I deadheaded it back to where it still had its couple leaves that were living. Um, but I don't think it's going to come back at all. This one, I didn't want to strip it back like I did that one. But as you can see, it just is so unhappy. It's just unhappy with life. Now, I also uh, shop at some great local places. Eaton Grove is great. Uh, the other one, the flower bed in Longmont is great. Uh, this columbine I got at Eaton Grove out in Eaton, northern Colorado. Um, and you can see how happy it is. It flowered and it's just happy. I mean, it's got a little bit of this on the edges. We're having some hot days and whatever, but 
Same treatment as the other ones. And, oh, I got forks all over because I got some rodent and cat issues. And I'm trying to keep the cats were killing them. The columbines, they were stepping on them and killing them. So they are surrounded by a frame of forks to keep them off. Uh, and it helps a little bit. Not really. Uh, but this columbine is doing much better. It's much happier. It will definitely come back next year. And the reason is, is because it came from a better place. Um, so that just makes a big difference when you're buying your plants. Especially when you're just starting, don't get discount plants from the grocery store and then be mad that you can't keep them alive because they were already unhappy, they were already diseased, they were already having issues, and you can't you can't say that that's on you. If When you are first starting out, I would always recommend getting the little bit bigger plants, getting healthier plants, and making sure that you're getting them from a good grower. Um, that way they will be prosperous for you and it won't be a frustrating situation where you get it in the ground and the flowers die and then it piddles out like these stupid columbines. No, they're not. It's just, I love columbines. Anyways, uh, so I hope everybody has a fantastic day. We will say farewell with my beautiful deal. Oh, deal. It smells so fantastic. I wish that you could smell it too. Mmm. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all soon. Okay, so when it doesn't let me just end it, it's because I didn't say it enough. Like, subscribe, hit the little button, do all this stuff. We'll see you later.